Michelle, is peanut butter a liquid or solid? She says it's a solid. Is it? Just about a year ago, I regained my love for gaming, and today I'm happy to say I built the ultimate gaming setup. For me, it's where I go to finally game after working, parenting, and everything in between. And it's not that I never really stopped liking games to begin with, it's just that as a newer dad, with only a little bit of time to game at the end of the day, I decided to give up gaming entirely. Before I discovered the Xbox Series S, I was actually a PC gamer for almost an entire decade, and when my daughter was born, I kicked my World of Warcraft habit and actually stopped gaming entirely. When I discovered the Xbox Series S was the next big thing, I definitely had to try it, and frankly, it brought me back huge into gaming. This console helped kickstart my channel just over a year ago and helped lead me to build this amazing setup. So today I'm going to take you through my entire Ultimate Gaming setup which covers both PC and console gaming. And I will have everything in this setup linked down below in the video description if you do want to check it out, so let's get into it. Alright, so I do want to start with console gaming since this is actually where I've been spending most of my time recently. This side of my setup has both the Xbox Series S and the PlayStation 5 hooked up to LG's recent monitor release, which is their 27 inch OLED. And I can easily say the new generation of consoles definitely pack a huge punch in terms of gaming performance, especially for the value. And for myself coming from PCs where I'm gaming at 1440p with high refresh rates, it's wild that these little systems can actually keep up. Starting with the PlayStation 5, this has been my flavor of the month simply due to the banger releases one after another. I've recently started the new Horizon Forbidden West expansion, Burning Shores, and graphically it's one of the most impressive games I've ever played. Not to mention the insane haptics coming out of the PlayStation 5 controller, which is an experience in its own. And for myself, the reason I've really been into consoles is that I find it a little bit easier to actually pick up a controller and just start gaming right off the bat versus PC, not that I really have a preference for one over the other. And when it comes to the Xbox Series S, it's barely larger than a bag of milk, and I can say this is absolutely one of the best values in gaming, period. Not just the price of the console itself, but Game Pass to me is priceless. Well, it's not actually priceless, it's about 20 bucks a month in Canada. And Forza has always been one of my go-to games to play when I wanna just chill out, and if I'm feeling a little bit more competitive, I still love to jump into Halo Infinite and still lose over and over and over and over and over. Plus, I've been really enjoying my 400th playthrough of Skyrim as a sneaky archer. And what adds to the experience, at least, is this monitor, which is LG's new release, the 27GR95QE. That's absolutely a mouthful, but it really is a good monitor. For me, I'm absolutely spoiled by the OLED panel alongside the 0.03 millisecond response time, and spec-wise, it ticks all the boxes with HDR, VRR, AMD FreeSync, NVIDIA G-Sync, alongside a 240Hz refresh rate, all of which is also available on their massive 45-inch variant. I know the PlayStation 5 and Series S will only go up to 120Hz, but for myself, the low response time and OLED panel are absolutely A+. At least when I get clapped by 12 year olds, it's on a beautiful screen. And without a doubt, fast paced games like Call of Duty shine on here and really make good use out of the AMD FreeSync. And if you haven't tried it out yet, you definitely gotta give Chivalry 2 a try. This game is absolutely wild. It definitely gives me 1990s WWF vibes. Plus it's available on both PS Plus and Xbox Game Pass. In the middle of the battle, you can eat grapes and fish, throw rocks all while screaming your face off, and sprinting around with a pitchfork. What else can you ask for? The 1440p HDR panel though really does look good when gaming, and one of my go-tos to check out HDR is always Cyberpunk 2077, which simply looks incredible. And if you're like me, who likes to play PC games at a 21 by 9 aspect ratio, the bigger brother to the 27 inch is absolutely insane. In terms of specs, it's mostly the same, although there's notably the most unique feature, which is the 800R curve. I've mentioned it in my previous videos, but if you're using a display this large, you simply need a curve this aggressive to keep everything on the screen within your peripheral vision. When using ultra-wides, anything larger than a 34-inch display, you're really starting to tilt your head around to see the edge of the display and whatever's on it. In this case, at least, with the 800R curve, you can see everything with a quick glance. And even though I spend a whole lot of time on console nowadays, there are still some games that I just simply gotta play on PC, and one of those is Overwatch. This game I've been playing since its beta in 2015, and somehow it's actually one of the few games I've gotten really, really good at. It's on this monitor that I went from Diamond Rank all the way up to Grand Masters, so for me, it's just been incredible. Now, my PC isn't anything wild either. This is the Fractal North PC case, and inside, I'm just rocking an RTX 2070 with an i7. And since I'm playing this on PC, I am actually making Making full use out of the 240 hertz refresh rate which again is super impressive and similar to the 27 inch model i'm still playing at a 0.03 millisecond response time and it takes advantage of nvidia g-sync with my gpu 
and it's not just Overwatch 2. There simply are other games I absolutely got to play on here. For myself, it comes down to my all-time favorite, which is Red Dead Redemption 2. I don't know how Rockstar did it, but graphically, this game easily holds up to current titles. For me, games like this are better played at a 21 by 9 aspect ratio, and sometimes I legit just ride around in this masterpiece of a game with no goal in mind. And overall, while I'm not a huge fan of RGB, these monitors do both have RGB hex lighting on the back end, which is still a nice touch. I personally just set these to a crispy teal or white, but if you ever want to go all out on the RGB, you absolutely can. And from the OLED to the HDR to the gamer specific menus, LG's done a really good job with these monitors, which is why they're in my setup. Now, I also want to talk about the kitchen that's in my office, which is actually my desk. Literally, this desk is made of kitchen countertops and it's perfect. This desk is made up of three parts and it's actually held together by the weight of itself. Coming in at just about 850 bucks, this really does provide good value for the price, although it is still rather pricey. This desk is made up of two Carly countertops in the walnut finish, sitting on top of three Alex drawers, as well as two Adil's legs. If you did want to replicate this setup a little cheaper, you could swap out this corner Alex drawer with more Adil's legs and save a bit. And if I didn't mention, these are all from Ikea. Again, it's pretty solid and provides me with loads of storage. And this desk has lasted me years already without any sort of issues, so it's definitely a 10 out of 10 recommendation for me. Now to round out the space, I do want to talk about some of my favorite accessories that I use on the daily, starting with my recent favorite keyboard, the NuFi Air 96. Honestly, I really just dig the low profile for my aging millennial wrists, and it sounds incredibly good. It is a mechanical keyboard with hot swappable switches if you ever wanted to. With this, I do use my Razer Orochi mouse when gaming. It's actually super affordable for a gaming mouse and uses either AA or AAA batteries. My favorite thing about it is that it just lasts forever and the batteries are easy to swap out. And another keyboard I use is Apple's classic Magic Keyboard. Again, it's also super low profile and simply does the job. I mentioned this in a recent video too, but I am a huge fan of everything Grove made and this walnut desk shelf adds so much to a setup just by creating different levels. And similar to the desk shelf, the felt mats from Grove made are top notch quality and help break up the space. And both of my controllers are on these super tiny stands. These things were like seven bucks and honestly, they do the job well for just seven bucks. It's just an easy place to set down these controllers but still have them displayed at the same time. So yeah, this is my ultimate gaming setup. I know people love to pick sides between PlayStation and Xbox and PC and console, but for myself, this is just my absolute oasis of gaming ultimate goodness. But truly, simply enjoying whatever game you're playing is all that really matters. The main thing I strive to do is simply not be too tired at the end of the day and actually get my game on. This setup should last me ages to come, and I'm looking forward to gaming more and creating more in this space. Anyways, that's been it. Thank you for watching to the end. Till next time.